Και είναι από πάνω και βλέπουμε αυτόν. Λέω μήπως εδώ δεν έχεις γκάτερ. <laughs> μήπως στην ένα, επειδή είναι και νυχτερινό, έτσι, δεν έχεις γκάτερ. Μήπως κάνεις γραμμές, γιατί για να πάει αυτό... <μμμμ>. Όπου είναι δηλαδή λέει, ένα σκοτεινάκι και λέω γιατί, λέω γιατί ώστε εδώ να ανάψει τη λάμπα του αυτός. Θέλεις ουά και μετά box ή box και μετά ουά. Box και μετά ουά. The quest for the foundations of mathematics is a quintessentially modern tale, a Sisyphean tale, each one of its heroes a modern Prometheus. When uh, Apostolos and I had our first lunch, uh, sort of, you know, we saw that, uh, that uh, this was a great story to tell. We were both uh, very interested in the very curious fact that uh, the majority of the protagonists of this great intellectual adventure ended up insane. The whole adventure of Logic Comics started as I was reading a book by the great Italian mathematician Giancarlo Rota. It contains an amazing sentence. It cannot be a complete coincidence that several outstanding logicians of the 20th century found shelter in asylums. Cantor, Zermelo, Gödel, Peano and Post. And others too, not mentioned by Rotter, like Frege, who ended his life a racist lunatic, and Bertrand Russell, who certainly had flirted with insanity during their lives. And Ludwig Wittgenstein, who plays a marginal role in the quest for the foundations of mathematics, from the mathematical side, but a very crucial one from the philosophical. And some would not consider him a model of sanity, Certainly Bertrand Russell, his mentor, didn't. There are many great things about logic comics. The first is that it gets to the heart of aspects of mathematics that make mathematics unique and aspects that are themselves almost internally paradoxical, internally inconsistent one with another. I love the mathematics, but Annie, not at all. Il est vrai que ce n'était pas mon domaine préféré. I do not like the mathematics. Mais... <laughs> <laughs> One day, uh, Apostolos called us, and it, it was a, a very funny coincidence because we were looking for something to do in comics, and he had a, an idea for a comic book. So we met uh, immediately. <laughs> Logic Comics has three stories, which, like Russian dolls, are one inside the other. In the first one, some friends in present-day Athens get together to try and tell and at the same time understand the second story. The friends are Apostolos, myself, Christos, Alekos, Ani, and also Anne. <laughs> A book including a story on its own making could be easily called self-referential. <laughs> What's self-reference? It's simply referring to yourself, like the ancient Athenian Evulidis, saying, my fellow citizens, I'm now lying to you. And you see what the problem is. If he is lying when he's saying this, he's telling the truth. But if he's telling the truth, he's lying. They are crazy, these logicians. We started to develop material. We had this, uh, this retreat, non-stop discussions for days and days and days. In this stage, we talked a lot about the subjects that would come up in the book, so we tried to arrange our material thematically. And on this little board here, we have the various themes, like uh, madness or Cantos madness, either more generic or more specific, which come together in the various strands of the plot, but we didn't yet have a plot. We were just playing structurally with the ideas and giving them form, actually the form of a three-act structure. There are eight different stages through which an idea develops to become a comic book. And these proceed one page at a time. These are script, 
what we call patatology to give the script flesh and blood, the roughs, the final lettering, drawing or penciling as it's called, perhaps the most basic stage in the creation of the images for a comic book, shadows to give our image some extra depth. This is a very crucial page by the way, where Bertrand Russell first meets Euclid and geometry and discovers in them a safe haven. He turns to logic for security, as it were, from all the vicissitudes of a very unstable and very dangerous world. After the shadows, the drawing is inked and becomes much more precise. And last but not least, there's the coloring. <laughs> Που σου φαίνεται mm. τελείως άνθρωστη όταν είσαι σκητσογράφος που, mm. θέλει, που θέλει μόνο να δουν πώς γίνεται το σκίτσο. Mm. Και εμένα μου φαίνεται το ίδιο περίεργο το πώς γίνεται το, το γράψιμο. Mm. Μου φαίνεται τελείως κουφό. The stage of the script is where you actually move from something general, a story that can be recounted in prose form like a tale or a novel, to something that's written specifically to become a comic book. Mm. Όπως κάθεται, όπως κάθεται και στο προηγούμενο, είσαι εσύ από πάνω, είμαι εγώ ο και το ρίχνω έτσι λίγο. Εδώ έχει γυρίσει προς εμένα. In Logic Comics, we use what's known as a full script. A technique of putting in words as much as you can concerning what's going to happen on the page. Both Alekos and I have some background in the cinema, so that language comes quite naturally to us. In our script, you see a lot of mentions of camera position, description of shots, like medium shot, medium long shot, close up. Και πάμε κοντινό. Έχει πλησιάσει αυτή. Έχει πλησιάσει αυτή. Οκ. Γιατί την Μποτσοφάνη και αρχίζει να μιλάει και αυτή πλησιάζει πιο κοντινό. Έτσι, πιο κοντινό είναι αυτή εδώ. Και λέει, The man has surpassed himself in eccentricity. The act of writing seems to me very, very similar to the act of constructing a proof. The fact that so many things, so many loose ends, must magically in the end stick together makes uh, the two uh, the two activities uh, very parallel, very similar. Ενώ είναι έτσι που 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 που, να δώσεις και φάλεις την πακ γραμμές. Δηλαδή αν φάς προφίλ, ναι, μαχιά δίδρας και λέει Professor Russell. Burton Russell soon became our tale's hero and also its narrator. He was one of the quest's greatest stars, its most eloquent protagonist. Bertrand Russell is a quintessentially modern person, an atheist yearning for the absolute, a cynic masquerading as an idealist. Or was it the other way around? Story two is set on September 4th, 1939, the day when the United Kingdom declared war on Germany. Bertrand Russell is going to the American University where he's going to give a talk on the role of logic in human affairs. He's met by a group of protesters, protesting against the possible involvement of the United States in the European war. They stop him, and knowing him to be a pacifist, ask him to join their protest. But Russell, the cunning old fox, asks them to come in and follow his lecture. When the script has gone through endless revisions, we go into the second stage, the pathology. <laughs> pathology, pathology. You know, this, uh, the professional term is uh, thumbnails. <laughs> the patatology stage of the work comes from the Greek word patata, which means potato, like these here, okay? Or these, if it's a close-up, which, in which Alekos draws the heads of the characters in a very simple potato form. For example, he gives them expression like this. Box, aristera, pano. Ναι, μια στιγμή, μια στιγμή. Είμαι... Το λέω, ε. Top hat. Α. Να ξυνήψω, ναι. It's the face where word and image come together, or rather where word first turns into image. But more importantly, perhaps, the stage where artist and writer first meet at the concrete level of the individual page, the actual story of the comic book. The world had come topsy-turvy. 
πάνω κάτω. You know, in a sense here I'm like the narcissistic theater director of old who thought that only if he actually enacted all the parts, the actors could follow his instructions and play the parts as he wanted them. Darling, shh, shh. Congratulations. Dada. If this is art, I'll take mathematics. In the roughs, I try to put on paper what the script describes. I start with the actual thumbnails, very rough sketches in a much smaller scale than the actual final page, where I try to get the feel of the flow of the narrative in terms of panels. See how they fit together on the page. And then I take rough paper where I've already marked the size of our own page and try and draw the panels in their actual size. And there's story three. The main story of the book, the story which Russell tells his lecture audience, in which he and Frege and Cantor and Whitehead and Hilbert and Wittgenstein and Gödel play the central part. What intrigued us is that it is a very human story, a story of a great intellectual adventure that contains passions, love, both happy love and unhappy love, but also madness. And madness is a topic that is quite scary to most people. Especially when those who are mad are otherwise very logical. So Alekos does the roughs and then we put them up on the board and go over them. Already you have a sense of the drama coming alive. And this is a very exciting time for me because Alekos' potatoes are very tasty. I mean, they're potato heads, but they can be quite exciting in look. If a scene inspires him from the script, he may go into much more detail. But even when it's mere potato heads, I begin to get a sense of the drama already in the scene. Is she hungry, maybe? Eight half an hour ago. I'm going to check, tell ya. Damn. <laughs> Ita. <laughs> 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 and then we have this drawing scan, so we can proceed with the remaining five stages of the work. Alekos gives me that with um, uh, his letters, with the, the text in it. And now I, I'm just covering Alekos' letters. So I'm starting the lettering. And the lettering is handwritten. It looks in every page the same. With the final uh, lettering, you know also the space that is going to be covered by the balloons. We see the, the negative space, I mean what is left on the panel so we can draw in it. I'm a cartoonist uh, who comes from animation. And uh, as I have been working on it for years, I got the use of working on the light box. So for me it's uh, like uh, redrawing uh, the same page uh, many times. And every time I draw it, uh, I get more and more detail in it. But anyway, with this uh, baby step uh, procedure, we are, we are sure that uh, we always have what we have thought at the beginning. <laughs> this is the scene where Russell ends up in jail for his pacifist resistance to World War I. Yep, I see. Yes, how are you going to eat? Yes, Μα αφού είναι έρλο άνθρωπο, δεν θα του πάνε να καπάει το φαγητό του, να μου το κοτόπουλο. Είπαμε καλό σερβίς, όχι και έτσι να πούμε. Τι φιλάκι. Μπορείτε να γράψετε μου να το. At the beginning, we'd like to do something more artsy. 
looking. And uh, finally we decided that we're going to use the, the good old technique with, with the black outline and uh, the flat color inside. The clean line style was made famous by Hergé, the creator of Tintin. But we decided to add shadows to the drawings to give a sense of depth and atmosphere while keeping the drawing simple, easy to read. And then the page goes to the inker where the line becomes even clearer, very precise. The direction is this. I'm telling you, I'll give you a mail to the Selida. Την παίρνω εγώ, την ανοίγω στο κομπιούτερ. Και ξεκινάω να τη, να τη μελανώνω. Φτιάχνω πρώτα ένα layer άσπρο, με μια μικρή διαφάνεια, ώστε να μην με αποσπάει πολύ, να βλέπω από κάτω τη λεπτομέρεια του σκίτσου. Και ξεκινάω να τη μελανώνω από πάνω. There are lines of varying widths according to the proximity to the viewer to add perspective. In this scene, Russell visits an old Freggy to find him in the midst of a crisis of racist paranoia. So, what's at the root of all this very logical madness? Could its cause be hidden in biographical detail? Or could the madness line the times in which these people lived? Sallow, skinny, frightened children. Quand c'était la, la guerre, je me suis inspiré beaucoup de, de films. J'ai fait beaucoup de, de recherches. Et il y avait, par exemple, avec Apostolos, on était d'accord de faire un peu les couleurs du film euh, un, un long dimanche de fiançailles, c'est-à-dire un peu dans les sépias, il euh, y avait des, des gris, des bleus, enfin des, des, des couleurs comme ça. Je suis arrivée à ce stade-là, qui est euh, une mise en couleur euh, générale. Là, j'ai mis à peu près l'atmosphère, mais je ne suis pas encore satisfaite de, de l'image euh, entière. Donc, euh, à mon avis, c'est pas mal, mais on peut améliorer. Alors, c'est limite le, le côté euh, comment peau et ciel, mais peut-être qu'avec l'ombre, hop, on voit tout de suite beaucoup mieux. Donc, euh, le choix était de le faire aussi par ordinateur, évidemment. On a l'avantage euh, de pouvoir euh, changer les couleurs euh, très facilement. La, la seule tristesse pour euh, celui qui met les les couleurs à ordinateur, c'est que moi ça me manquait un petit peu, c'était le, le qui fait, que fait le papier avec le pinceau. One of the beauties of logic comics is that it, it uh, expresses this so exceedingly well, both in its um, visual representations, in its change of mood, in its choice of uh, facets of the story to talk about, and finally, in its glorious end. Orestes is accursed by the ancient law of blood. All of a sudden, you find yourself transported to the issues of an ancient Greek tragedy, the Orestia, where dogmatic solution, that is to say revenge, 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 is replaced by a kind of both merciful and just, and just resolution. And for that hero, 
and for that hero, it's the happiest of endings. Your mistake is simply that you see it as a story of people. Now, the beauty of Logic Comics is it makes the Oresteia and its um, strange and weird transformation part and parcel of the story of the foundations of mathematics. Tellos, que to Theodox. <laughs>